David Wright teaches physics at Tidewater Community College. He's at Bush Gardens to demonstrate that no matter how advanced the Drakken Fire seems, it's governed by the same principles as all other coasters. Jennifer, Jennifer do you believe in physics? I sure do. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. This, this, this demonstration takes just a little bit of faith in physics. Okay. You ready for this? I want, you to, I want you to feel this bowling ball for me, all right? Is that okay. heavy? What do you think? It's pretty heavy. Is that pretty heavy? 14-pound bowling ball. Now, you have to hold the ball. Hold it right up to your nose. Now, move up just a little bit here. And what I want you to do is let go. And don't move. Put your hands down. Don't move a muscle. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, move. We're going to get Jennifer one more chance here. <laughs> Don't move. It's coming right at me. It's coming right at you. Well, you know, it's coming right at you, but you know what? It's just like a roller coaster. Once that roller coaster has gotten over the top of the first hill, it can never go as high again. Anybody know why? Why can't it go as high anymore? Friction. Very good. Ready? Here we go. Every coaster ride is a lesson in physics. It begins when a train is pulled up the first hill by an electric-powered chain and then has to rely on its own momentum to coast to the end of the ride. Next, passengers feel the giddy sensation of freefall when gravity pulls them down faster than their stomachs expect to go. As the train travels, friction gradually slows it but there's still enough energy to hurtle through a series of acrobatic stunts. The turns in the track are made progressively tighter, so the passengers continue to feel accelerating forces, even though their speed is actually decreasing. But the lesson in physics doesn't stop here. When the riders enter a loop, they experience another force that can literally take their breath away. One of the most important principles in force on a roller coaster is that it's centripetal force. Y'all know what centripetal force is? Yes. How many know? Oh, about half of you. Let's find out. This glass of water, what does this glass of water have to do with centripetal force anyway? Let's find out. We have Arvin back here has a board attached with some strings and places this cup of water, regular water, on the board. And all Arvin has to do is take that cup of water and swing it around his head just like this. <laughs> and if you have enough belief in physics and centripetal force, you know it can't possibly come off. Right, Arvin? <laughs> all right, Arvin, let's see if you make it over the top. Who thinks Arvin can make it? One, two, about five. All right, Arvin's building up his confidence now. All right, go for it. Over the top. Now, do you know how to stop? Whoa! Well, one of the important things about centripetal force is the fact that if you go really, really fast, it's obviously going to stay on. All right? And what happens is the board pushes up on the cup, and what happens? The cup pushes on the board. Cup pushes back on the board, and their two are pressed together. That's called Newton's third law, action and reaction. So on a roller coaster, you get into a loop like the corkscrew on the draft can fire. <coughs> when you get into the corkscrew at the very top, what's happening is the track is pushing which way? Down. Down. And you are pushing up on the track. Well, that's strange. You're being pressed into your seat even though you're upside down. Did y'all feel upside down when you're upside down? Yes. Did you ever leave your seat? No. You never left your seat. The same as the cup never leaves the board. 